Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today, I'll be showing you how I create and launch courses. And I'll, and I'll be dividing this in five major sections. In section one, I'll show you how I create the keynote presentation. In section two, I'll show you how I record all of that. In section three, we'll talk about editing all of the things that you record. In section four, we'll be talking about how to hype the course itself. And finally, in the last section, I'll talk about how I launch my courses. So let's get rolling. So the first thing that I do is I actually create a Google slide. And why Google Slides is because I like sharing the keynote with my team. I got the graphic designer that makes the presentation look pretty. And I have my baby sister who speaks great English and writes great English to spell check all of the typos that I usually <laughs> that I usually produce. So that's the main reason I use this over PowerPoint or over um, Keynote from Mac. So once I create the Google slide, what I do is I start brain dumping literally every single step I can think about that will help someone go from point A to point B. That is the process. I don't care about typos. I don't care about any kind of fluff. I don't care about quality at the moment because this is the first draft of the outline of my process, the process that I'll be showing my buyers how to follow so they can crush it in their daily lives. So at first I keep it extremely broad. Why? Because then I'll edit out all of the fluff. So I follow a very organic process. I don't overcomplicate it because if I do, I get overwhelmed, then I get anxious, and then I quit, which has happened to me many times, but not anymore. Because I give myself permission to create the worst draft, the worst draft in the world, because nobody else will see that besides my team. After I'm done with all of this brainstorming and moving things around, I usually end up with something like this. Let me show you. This is what I call the creator system. And it's one of the courses that I currently sell. So it looks like this. First step is collect, second step is create, third step is schedule or post, fourth step is templatize, and the last step is actually automate. And of course, it didn't start like this. <laughs> it, it was like a 10 step process, but after filtering through and just, you know, we're reading the, the slides over and over again, four or five times, I ended up with a five step system that, with that, I created a course creator system. By the way, I enjoy creating courses be because of two reasons. One, because it helps me simplify my own way of creating things, doing things in my day-to-day -day life and in my business. And secondly, now I have a process that is extremely easy to follow by anyone that purchases the course. So it's a win-win in my opinion. So now it's time to record the course. And what I use to record the course is ScreenFlow for Mac. Let me show you though. The little logo. There it is. There it is. That's the little logo. So why do I use ScreenFlow? It's because of four major reasons. Reason one is that it lets me record my screen really quickly and really fast. It also lets me record the audio of the computer and any external microphone that I have attached to my computer. The third reason is that it also lets me record the camera either the camera of the computer or this very same camera that I also use to record my courses. And the final most powerful reason why I use ScreenFlow is because, dude, it's just the simplest video editor I've used in my life. And I've used many others like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. ScreenFlow, my, my friend, is one of the easiest one, if not the easiest. So now let me tell you about my recording rules. It's actually three. Rule number one is the most powerful and, and it's the one that it is a little bit hard to get used to it. And it's actually recording nonstop, literally. I don't stop recording until I'm done recording the course. The reason is that I, I can always edit out all of the bad stuff from the course without any kind of issue afterwards. The second rule is that if I make a mistake, I don't, mi I don't mind pausing a little bit. And what I do is I clap three times so that later in the editing process, I can actually see like a little spike. I'll leave, here's a little image of how, how that looks. It's three little spikes three little spikes so I can know that at that place I have to edit out. So what you see here is a waveform, okay? And those three spikes is exactly when I clapped three times. And finally, what I do is I keep recording even if I do a full stop just to think. I don't mind doing that because I can always edit out all of the mistakes. Now let's talk about phase three, editing. So what I do when I'm editing is I remove all of the long pauses, I take out all of the bad takes, and finally I remove all of the filler words like um, eh, and okay. 
especially okay, because I, I've discovered that I use the, the word okay many, many, many times when I'm explaining something, okay? So once I'm done removing all of the fluff and all of the things that don't work for the course, what I do is I watch the course, the full course at 2x speed, two times. And what I do is I take some notes of the mistakes that I do. And if it's a major mistake, I re-record that part. No problem, I don't mind because at the end of the day, what I want to create is a powerful, powerful product that actually solves the problem without, you know, confusing people. It's now time for step four, building hype. And this is actually the easiest of everything you're going to be doing to create and launch your courses. Why? Because creating the course is actually tedious. You have to think, you have to explain, you have to sell, you have to, oh man, it's just too much. Of course, I'm talking also about launching the course, but building the hype is the easiest thing you could ever do. Let me tell you how I do this. So what I do is I talk about the course every freaking day on social media. I just put people up to speed in regards to where the process is. I talk about, oh, I just bought a new domain. I just created a website. I just created the first module. That's it. I just make people remember that I'm actually creating the course. And this is paramount to get a bunch of sales. Building that hype is what gets people excited to buy your stuff. Another thing that I do to build hype is I launch a waitlist. And a waitlist is nothing more than a tool, a email marketing tool to gauge interest. So anyone that joins your email list using the waitlist landing page, well, they're telling you, hey, I want your course, tell me more about it. So they give you permission to market, they give you permission to sell to them, they give you permission to send them more information. So that's all you have to do to build hype. Post about the progress of your course creation every day, and if you feel compelled to, also create a waitlist, which is a great way to gauge interest. So by now you're ready to launch your course. And let me tell you about how I do it. The process is very organic because by now people already know that I'm going to launch the course. So it's not a surprise because I've been hyping the course on every single step I take on creating it, right? So all I have to do right now is remember people, hey, tomorrow I'm going to launch a course, which is what I actually do the day before launching the course, both on social media and inside my email newsletter. So what I do before launching the course is I actually create the whole marketing campaign. I write all of my tweets, I write all of my posts, I create all of the slideshows and the imagery and the creatives and all of the things that I'm going to be posting both on Twitter and on Instagram. On top of that, I also write around eight to 10 emails to send to my newsletter. Why so much content, you ask? Yes, I understand that this is the most frustrating part of the launch. You have to tell people, buy my course now, because if you don't, they won't buy it. I don't know if you know, but the one way to generate more money is driving traffic. And driving traffic is all about getting people to click on your stuff, right? And think about this, the way you get people to click on your stuff is telling them, hey, click here to get my course. And you do that through social media and through your email marketing campaigns. And in order to maximize the number of sales, what I do is I tell people, you have a deadline to join before I raise the price or I close enrollment. This is what we call urgency. And urgency is one of the best persuasion tools you can use to close deals and to get more people to purchase your course because it gives them that fear of missing out on something important, which is your course. By the way, you can either add a deadline or limited spots to enroll in your stuff. Both work perfectly. So why do I do all this work beforehand? Here's the thing, you cannot control how many people will buy your stuff. You can only control all of the actions that you take before launching, like creating your course, hyping the course, and creating all the marketing campaign that you'll be using to launch it. So since you cannot control how many people will buy, focus on the things that you can control. And as a final note, Thank you so much for watching this video and I want you to take action. Start taking action. Don't, don't sleep on this information. Start creating your courses, start selling them and start making an extra income with your social media account. So that's all for it. My name is Jose Rosado. Go to the description down below and join my newsletter because there I'll send a lot of great information on how to build up that beautiful digital product business that you have. That's all for today. Talk to you soon.